I don't know. I don't know the issue. It's on now. No, Remember, I have a little frog in my soul. That was no. How about this? yesterday when I was young? So many happy songs were waiting to be sung. So many wild pleasures lay in store for me. And so much pain my dazzled eyes refused to see. There are so many songs just waiting to be sung. Let us make me feel so good. Like rain upon my tongue When I think of yesterday Oh, yesterday When I Vaudeville, so when she was 14, she joined her dad's vaudeville act. 
Then, uh, after starring in a Broadway musical, she went on to enjoy an extraordinary career in theater, film, and television. Audrey was our teacher, our mentor, and our dear friend that we deeply loved. Rather than a polished performance, tonight we're going to share with you a typical Tuesday night workshop with its uh, unpredictability and possible goofs. <laughs> Probable. <laughs> I haven't gotten off here yet, so <laughs> you might be like for me too. <laughs> oh, a few details. We don't expect an emergency, but should there be one, we have three emergency exits. One is in the uh, green room of the lobby, and the other is right in the aisle way there. As you, you probably saw it as you entered the theater, and the other is backstage. You may have noticed a slight situation with the restrooms. Unfortunately, two of them are out of order, but we do have a third backstage. So if you have the need, we ask you to go to the lobby and use the green room exit. And there's a lantern on a ladder by the stage door that will light your way. <laughs> Once you enter, it's to the, the restroom is to the left. And one positive thing about this is that you'll get an opportunity to see uh, how wonderfully messy the backstage of a theater can be. <laughs> And, uh, oh, I should mention that. Oh, there's also, there's also the straight. bathroom, the bathroom at the restaurant next door. I was just going to okay. say that. trust me. Anyway, uh, yes, the, the owner of the restaurant next door is going to allow us to use the restroom if you prefer that. And we're going to go straight through uh, with no intermissions. So from heaven, Audrey is going to be inspiring us. So please enjoy and being part of our Tuesday night workshop. Thank you very much. singers, writers, directors, performing artists would come every Tuesday and we never knew what was going to happen. This was a typically three-hour workshop. We've condensed it for, for this evening. And during this workshop, Audrey would be sitting right here where her son, Mitch Singer, is here. Let's give him a big round of applause. And we're so grateful to the family to, to allow us to be here uh, up until this time to have the celebration. Also from the family, we have Nathaniel Singer, who is in the booth. Yeah. Nathaniel has done many of the shows. There's been all sorts of productions of different mm -hmm. kinds here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nathaniel runs the show from, from up there. Uh, and this theater has had many awards uh, and Nathaniel got a Best Night Director Award at the Novel Fringe as well. Yes. And so, to warm things up, I come here to learn. And I always wonder about learning. And I also travel everywhere I go to look for famous magicians that nobody knows about. And learn from them. This one guy in France, had a deck of cards, 
I mix up, mix up the car. <laughs> and then I will take a car, the, the fog. <laughs> and balance it on the back, <laughs> the edge of the back. I, I don't know how we did it on this page. He then took the cars and squished the deck. And uh, he hammered it. Then he squeezed all the air and sealed it, threw it up in the air and caught the car. Wow. I wish I knew how to do this. <laughs> so every week we show up and we do we, we the, uh, those participating members will sign the, the sheet and I will call upon the first one, uh, Don Scribner. Don? Uh, thank you, everyone. October 1st, 1984. I arrived in LA. I'd given up a career in education to uh, fulfill my passion, follow my dreams. 1985, I auditioned for the Actors Forum Theater. And here I stand. I am the younger statesman. <laughs> I'm proud of that. I have dear friends through the decades. I was in both theaters. Audrey is yet mentor. I think about calling her every other day. <coughs> All those years I never ever heard Audrey sugarcoat a critique. <laughs> <laughs> she was about as blunt and honest that a person could be. She didn't like it, she told me because everything in this building was about the work. I didn't believe you, I thought you were performing. All right, I believe me. Uh, the audience has to believe you. Everything was about the work with Audrey. She never liked my humor. <laughs> she said your humor is not funny. <laughs> <laughs> I told her I was uh, doing a stand-up comedy routine and uh, I was making up my own material and the first joke I told nobody laughed. But that was okay because I didn't even get it. <laughs> she said, not funny. <laughs> I went home to Wisconsin to visit after about a dozen years here. I'd done a few movies of television. I knocked on my dear, dear friend Smiling John's door. And he came up. Don, Don, oh, so nice to see you, Don. Come on in. And the house was rocking. There was some hard rock music or something going on upstairs. The floor was kind of shaking. And Smiling reached right over and he grabbed a broomstick and started hitting the ceiling. And he said to his 12 uh, year old daughter, Alex, Alex, I want you to come down here and meet someone. She came down. She looked and smiled and said, Alex, this is my dear friend, Dawn. He's a Hollywood actor. <laughs> she looked at me up and down and she said, no, he's not. <laughs> Away she went. <laughs> smiled and said, uh, you know, Don, sometimes I prefer the cat. <laughs> Audrey liked that one. <laughs> Every song I've ever written, I showcased you. <coughs> With my dear friend Billy, our musical director on the keys, Love him. Yeah. 
Touches us all like a breeze through the trees. The stronger the love, the harder. So pass me that joint. Now I have a shot too. I don't care, pick one. I've got some revenge of memories to do with you. It is what it is. was what it was. Time wins all races. It's Mother Nature's call. Left with what was. It is what it is. It was what it was. It is what it is. It was. It was. writers and directors to join us here at the workshop. She would review their plays and oftentimes produce them. She especially, on behalf of the nonprofit, the Actors Forum Theatre Workshop and Theatre, encouraged women. Well, every week, writers would come in and pick an actor. Who are you going to use today? Who, who would you like to, to work with you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they may have written it a year ago and brought it out or just wrote it, and this is where they would see how it reads. Cold readings, uh, drafts, scripts. 
So uh, now signing up, we have Lauren uh, Padlock and joining Virginia Redford. Welcome to the amazing television show. I'm your host, Virginia Fox, and I'd like us to welcome our first guest, Lauren Smith. <laughs> Synesthesia. <laughs> you know, Virginia, when you eat, you smell and taste the food. When I listen to music, I smell and taste the sound. I'm not saying that I have more than five senses. What it is, is sensory crossover. So if, if I see the Alpine Mountains, you see a belly dance. <laughs> Let me be something. You probably see these as black numbers, but I see them in different colors. In, in addition, some of them seem closer to me and some more distant. In addition, these numbers to me have a gender. <laughs> Is there a way I could see the gentleman numbers? <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance that you could get synesthesia if I gave you brain injury, but I know you don't want that. With synesthesia, do you feel like you are living in another dimension? You know, living with synesthesia has always felt natural to me. In fact, I'm glad that I have it. <clears throat> Do you cringe when someone scratches a blackboard? Actually, that is pleasant to me. <laughs> but I'm not saying this. <laughs> everything is positive. Recently, I was at Georgia Swamp Kitchen, and I liked the place. But the last time I was there, the music they played literally left a bad taste in my mouth. <laughs> really? Are you the only one with the condition? From what I've read, about 4% of the people have synesthesia, but perhaps everyone has some synesthesia. For example, Virginia, when you go to the movie theater, do you hear the words coming out of the actor's mouth on the screen? Yes, I'm not that deaf. Well, actually, the sound isn't coming out of the actor's mouth. It's probably coming from speakers on the side of the theater. <laughs> but your brain perceives that the sound is coming out of the actor's mouth. Well, what happens when you watch a movie? Well, when I watch a movie, I feel textures. And when I watch a silent movie, it's not silent to me. But the sounds I hear you probably wouldn't call music. Are there any famous people with synesthesia? Yes. Lady Gaga, Franz Liszt, Duke Ellington, Billy Joel, and Beyonce, to name some. Are there advantages to having synesthesia? Yes, there's some real advantages. People with synesthesia generally are more creative and they tend to have a better memory. Okay, we have a, a question from the audience. Yes. Do animals get synesthesia? Mm, if so, none of them have told me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever have sensory overload? That's a good question. Maybe there should be some research on that. But this is the truth. In 2002, they did a study it shows you can't trust studies. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren, can you prove you're not a space alien? Well, I had a DNA test and it showed that I come from hillbillies. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any ancestors with synesthesia? Me and my grandma. She said that grandpa had colorful speech. 
<laughs> okay, thank you, Lauren. Our next guest won the contest for the world's largest burp. <laughs> Hank Garrett. <laughs> She always said, this is not a class, it's a workshop. <laughs> Be that as it may, King Henry did not live forever either, but following ill, his son, the Prince of Wales, came and took away the crown, whereupon the king made a long speech. So long I must refer you to Shakespeare's play. Things being thus settled between them, the king died and was succeeded by his son, who grew quite reformed and amiable, forsaking all of his dissipated companions. It was during his reign that Lord Cobham was burned alive. <laughs> the king then turned his thoughts to France, where he went and fought the famous Battle of Agincourt. He afterwards married the king's daughter, a very agreeable woman by Shakespeare's account. In spite of all this, he died. <laughs> and was succeeded by his son, Henry VI. I cannot say much for this monarch's sense, nor would I if I could, for he was a Lancastrian. I suppose you know all about the wars between him and the Duke of York, who is of the right side? If you do not, I must refer you to another history, for I'm not here just to give you information. His Majesty married Margaret of Anjou, a woman so distressed that I almost pity her. Almost. It was during this reign that Joan of Arc lived and caused a row among the English. They should not have burned her, but they did. few more battles. And then the king was murdered. <laughs> and the queen sent home. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> Many of the 
the original members from going back almost 1975 are here, like Ursula and Billy and uh, uh, Julie. Uh, and uh, Don came around the 2000s. So it's just kind of, and then there's uh, various new people have joined uh, along the way. Uh, and that brings me to our next person who will not be dancing on the couch because the couch needs to be moved. Help. <laughs> Avis? Yeah. So uh, you're next, Avis Rentmore, who has a guest with her, Roscoe. Yes. Yes. And to just show the variety of it all, you're going to enjoy some dancing. <laughs> is, it, is it so unique? No, no scene before the dancing. Uh, all right. A little scene? You have a scene? Yes. You're ready? Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. It leads into it. Is there any angle? Yeah. All righty. Hello, I'm Marjorie Pettibone. <laughs> and in this modern age, the lady faces many challenges. <laughs> None greater than hosting the perfect cocktail party. Party planning stands starts in the morning when her husband tells her she's throwing a party. This is great news. <laughs> Before he leaves, hand him the newspaper, hand him his briefcase, and remember to avoid reading the newspaper because you may get some ideas. Oh, there's so much to do. Hollow out a pineapple, fill it with some shrimp salad, make a 20 pound gelatin, Fill it with beef and marshmallows. And then don't forget to whip up a fun Polynesian brunch with one part fresh orange juice, one part Marciano cherries, and don't forget a dash of gin. And while you're doing that, you can get some bust exercises too. Oh, look at the time. The guests are almost here. Now, a lady always knows how to greet her guests individually by their social standing. You always greet a man by Mr. and his full name, and you greet the woman by her husband's full name, and you greet a divorcee by her attorney's name. And you make sure to point out all her flaws in her figure and her bust, you know, what brought on the divorce. So you can learn from this. Now, always address cats by their first and last name. And you address dogs by Mr. and their dog name. <laughs> because cats are girls and dogs are boys. <laughs> now, if you have an Italian guest, they tend to talk with their hands a lot. So always make sure you have an arm length of distance so that they can <laughs> now, the party's in full swing. Everyone's having a gas. And you look over at your husband, laugh at a couple of his jokes, like oh. that. <laughs> and then, before you know it, after a couple cocktails, you bring out the kids, put hats on their heads, drive around the room once, send them back to bed until the next party. <laughs> and remember, if you've had too much gelatin, smoked too much cigarettes, had too many cocktails, well, you may have the urge to visit the powder room, but remember, a lady never visits a powder room while her guests are still present. You wait for everyone to go home, clean the entire house, and then take yourself out to the woods to relieve yourself. Now, if for any reason you should suffer from diarrhea, then you need to stay out there with the rest of the animals, never to return. But if the party goes off with a hitch and your husband's very happy, you've pleased a lot of guests, well, that's truly a grand night. But always remember to keep a cool head. And while we finish off this little, you know, little story about put together a party, why don't we fit in a little dance number? Because, you know, every party has to have a little dancing or a little music. Oh, whoa! <laughs> Roscoe, can you cue the music and we'll dance for these folks? <laughs> I'm not a slip on my face. I'm a man, 
Chekhovian mixture, <laughs> and uh, uh, as in Chekhov, uh, not Chekhovian, but whatever. It is now. It is. <laughs> and uh, uh, Audrey, uh, Don, can, can I invite you to come and do an improv? We would never know what we were going to do. Uh, sometimes she would she would give us um, what she called underbellies, uh, things like live your dream, show compassion, laugh out loud. Uh, we would get like the first line and the last line, and she would prepare <laughs> certain sayings, uh, or we would do the alphabet. Uh, well, you can pick one of these if you like. One of these. Yeah, and I'll just say, I have not seen these before. All right. All right. All right. I don't want to know what yours is. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, do you want to do the alphabet and get the first line? Oh God! <laughs> no, I'll get a first line and last line. Last time I did this, I forgot the last line. <laughs> I'm serious. All right, so um, you can call for a line, and she she will give it to you. So could you give me the last line? Thank you. Do you want the last line? Uh, just to reinforce. Sure, to reinforce. Yes, great, yeah. great. So could I have a last line for this actor? You're really talented, but you're kind of a pain in the ass. And could I have a first line? Whoopee! Whoopee! I'll try to remember that. <laughs> uh, and my, just give us a relationship of some kind. Be creative. Okay. Um, you're. Agent, client. All right, something emotional. Bus driver and passenger. Bus driver and passenger. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. you want to do that? <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this first song was a uh, Audrey's favorite. Thank <laughs> you. 
This next song is uh, from the musical Chorus Mind. Kiss today, goodbye. The sweetness and the sorrow. We did what we had to do. And I can't regret what I did for love, what I did for love. Look, my eyes are dry. The gift was ours to borrow. It's as if we always knew. But I won't forget what I did for love, what I did for love. God. Push-ups 
And about 20 years later, I became a seafood master. And the, the name of my school was called Fighting Tigers. So I had that put on this staff. So I, when I go for walks in, in, you know, in any of the canyons, I have who I am. And so this was a big influence on me and my start as a, as a young man. Next, I ran into a monk. And this Buddhist monk said, how am I different than a tree? And I said, what? <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? And uh, anyways, he had one student, and I was his only student. He only picked one. He's never trained anybody else again. <laughs> After my train many years with him, uh, at the same time I met a medicine man, a native medicine man from uh, Gold River in Chinsian, and I studied with him and the monk for many many years, maybe ten years, and uh, he gave me a name, a medicine name out of sweat, and I was a sweat bearer, so I could have you know the sweats and and all the traditional things that they would teach you to. Uh, to figure out the energy of life of the animals and the trees and things. And he gave me the name White Wolf. So I have the fighting tigers from my teacher, a lot of them, the monk and the medicine man. And these three have turned me into who I am today. Of course, the actor's form helped me with my uh, acting as well. Um, so this is, a, this is like a staff. And you know, I can do this and I don't want anything, different things and then start, you know, doing different moves. And so I might, so I wanted to have a staff where I could do different moves with, right? I'm not gonna do all of them, but I'm just gonna show you that. So this is why I had this made, so I could perform that. And when I walk in the park, um, let me see if I can play this just quickly here. Queen Charlotte to Alaska. I walked every mountain from Alberta to to Alaska. And one day, I was at the river, and I was with this food here. And uh, I was playing at the water at the river that I see every single day. I see wolves. I see cougars. I see bears uh, and, and salmon, and you know all, the whole nine yards, right? I'd be playing. And as I'm playing, I'm in the water, in the river, and I said, I'm not going to be playing in the water. I'm just going to put my feet in the water, and the river is going down, and it's a beautiful morning, and I look out, mm -hmm. looking at the trees, and I'm playing. And all of a sudden, something touches my feet. And I go, oh my God. So I look down. But I was like, just playing, like, you know, just, just playing. So I look down, and, and, I'm like, and I'm like, what? And there's thousands of fish <clears throat> at my feet. And I thought, this is impossible, you know. Where's my camera? So I'm playing, and when I look, all the fish were all from my feet right across the river. And they're big little ones, and they're all there. And, and I stopped playing, and I looked, and because I was mesmerized by this. How is this possible? I'm like, what's going on? Like, and, and all of a sudden, I see a fish out a little bit. And it was, what about that? It's a steelhead. And I go, why? That's not sound. It's a steelhead. And, and it was close, and it backed up. And it's looking at me with eyes. And I'm looking at it, and I go, <laughs> this is unbelievable. And so the power of sound, the fruit, is magical. I've seen so many crazy, wonderful things just like that. So that's my story, and I'm going to play two songs for everybody. 
by the dozen, right in the middle of the town. A fine tin roof with a real wooden floor was below. And there be one long staircase just going up, and one even longer going down. And one more leading nowhere just for show. I'd fill my yard with chicks and turkeys and geese and ducks to hear and play and squawking just as noisily as they can. And with each a would land like a trumpet on the air <laughs> as if to say, here lives a wealthy man. My wife, my comedy, looking like a rich man's wife with a proper double chin, supervising meals to her heart's delight. She would be cutting on airs and starting like a peacock, oi! What a happy would she be! Screaming at the servants day and night. Rich, I have the time that I like to sit by the synagogue and pray. Maybe have a seat by the Eastern Wall. And I discuss the holy books with the learned men seven hours every day. This would be the sweetest thing of all. of her history. There is a book where you'll see how Audrey and her husband built this theater with their own hands. You know, the wood, the steps, everything. So feel free to, to peruse through all that. This has been a great home for us. And now, one of longtime members uh, who's brought her family, who we've already met one. I'd like to welcome her so you were back then in the 1970s, right? Uh, 80? 89. Yeah, wow. 1889 years. Amazing. You need a chair? Do you need a chair? Yeah. 
his energy. Certain qualities. Now he wasn't anything like my father at all. I, I was attracted. And I was a little afraid. I've always been a little afraid of him. And then clearly he was a young man going places.
that doesn't include the family or the home. The big group of parents that were all tongue-tied on the outside, but oh boy, in the home. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Virginia and Avis, would you like to do an improv? Sure. All right, we're coming, we're, 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 we're getting close to our, our ending here. Um, this, is, this is one of uh, Audrey's uh, exercises for us. Uh, called uh, the alphabet. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do, you, do, you, do you have something you want them to give you a relationship with them? Um, yeah, they can give us a relationship. All right, and can I have a situation or a relationship for them? Ex-wives. Ex-wives! Huh? Same person! So the way this works, every, every line has to start with the next letter in the alphabet. So uh, another day I'm walking by and the other person has to start with B and all the way and they may make it to the end of the alphabet or start again or something like that till they go C. Okay. There you go. Actually, I, I wasn't expecting you to come over today. I Because? Because why? <laughs>
Hey, Elizabeth, thank Elizabeth. You need to be Hello, Elizabeth, thank you for coming back. And Deborah, Deborah as well. Uh, it, uh, and also, not just actors, but uh, all the entire support that happens when a production is done. Uh, many of us, Ursula and Julie, would do box office and, and help them get the theater ready like Julie did this time. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Mark, Mark uh, Shaw was, has been stage manager on and off since 1978. Wow. Yes, he's back there. Uh, so we are going, we, we miss Audrey so much. Already. Yes, yes. Uh, and, um, and at the same time, we this theater is going to evolve into something. And so this is also the last workshop. Uh, so we're giving tribute and thanks to Audrey and to the Singer family for because uh, they supported her so strongly in, in her dream and it, it was good for us as well. Great actors came from here and great shows. Fritz Coleman did a show here. You'll read all about it over there. And now to close off the evening, I want to bring up Robert Peters. Ooh. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> and when he came here, he started breaking and singing, right? Yeah. Uh, as, as Virginia and many others. And over the years, uh, well, you'll see. Here we are, Billy and Robert. Okay, what are we doing? Should I use the microphone? Or can you hear me okay? Use the microphone. Use the microphone. Is that too loud? Is that okay?
time with its peaks She'll be rising She'll find a note I left hanging on the door And she'll laugh when she reaches the park It says I'm leaving Cause I've left that girl so many times before By the time I make Albuquerque She'll be working She'll probably stop at lunch and Give me a call She'll just hear that phone Keep on ringing Without a word, she took 
took away the sun in the dark she left behind I knew what she had done she left me for another it's a common tale but true a shattered man but wiser now I sing this song to you lemon tree very pretty and the lemon flower so sweet but the fruit of the poor lemon is impossible to eat lemon tree very pretty and the lemon flower so sweet but the fruit belly of the poor lemon <laughs> is impossible to eat